Talk. I'm Jason Laker. On tonight's show, we have something very interesting for you, a very provocative topic, perhaps. Friday, Dr. Jakubowskis resigned effective January 5th from his presidential position, and we have the new interim pre uh, president, Dr. Leonard Plakta, and we have Rod Kirk, president of the Faculty Association. So stay with us. We'll be right back, and we'll be talking about Central's future. Welcome to Crosstalk on MHTV and 91 Rock FM. Crosstalk, the show that addresses the current issues that face you as a Central Michigan University student or resident of mid-Michigan. The phone lines are open. Call 774-3691 or 774-3698. Crosstalk on MHTV and 91 Rock FM, a student production from the Broadcast and Cinematic Arts Department of Central Michigan University. The views expressed in this program are not necessarily those of the university, its faculty, administration, or the broadcast and cinematic arts department. And now, the host of Crosstalk, Jason Laker. Welcome back to Crosstalk. Tonight, for those of you who just joined us, we will be discussing the future of Central Michigan University. We have with us tonight the soon-to-be interim president of Central Michigan University, Dr. Leonard Plakta, who is the current dean of the College of Business Administration at Central. Thank you for joining us. Good to be with you. And we have Dr. Rod Kirk, who is a faculty member in the Department of Sociology, Anthropology. And Social Work. And Social Work. And is also the president of the Faculty Association at Central. Thank you also for joining us tonight. Pleasure to be here. And uh, I think before we delve into some of the specific issues, um, let's talk about your gentleman's reaction to this change in the administration or the structure. Um, and I guess well, we'll start with the soon-to-be interim president, Dr. Plata. Well, Jason, my reaction is positive, of course. Well, this I'm, is uh, I'm, uh, I'm pleased. I'm confident. I'm looking forward to change. And uh, I am pleased that the Board of Trustees has shown confidence in selecting me. So it's all positive from my point of view. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a very interesting challenge for you. Of course, you've been with Central. As we were discussing before the show, you received a 20-year award today. Just today. That's correct. Yes. Congratulations. So it was 20 years ago that I came here as a professor mm -hmm. of accounting and became dean later on. And uh, now I hope a, a productive and an optimistic president. And a very fitting change in 20 years so you can look back on something and also a new beginning. That's true. All right. And uh, you have also been here for over, actually over 20 years. Something over 20 years. And 22. So we have, this is a very good opportunity for us tonight as well, aside from the fact that you both hold key roles on our campus, um, if, if not, and soon to be the key role, so to speak. Um, since you've both been here for so long, I think we'll have a good opportunity to reflect tonight on where things have gone because that might be uh, the key to what's can, going to happen in the future. Now, um, you, as you mentioned, you did join Central's faculty in 1972. That's correct. And you were in the uh, accounting department. Yes, I came here as professor of accounting with the College of Business, and the Department of Accounting was quite young. Mm -hmm. And you became the dean in 1980? Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. now. In your time here, um, which you has gone through a few presidents and mm -hmm. I'm sure a number of other changes, what what has changed? I mean, as far as the uh, obviously there's different buildings that I think, but I'm talking about maybe the atmosphere and, and uh, in particular um, the morale on our campus. Well, I think the university has matured a great deal during the 20 years that I have been here. Uh, as it approaches its 100th birthday, I think is no longer the, the young kid on the block. But at the same time, I think it is far from a mature institution. But I think it has moved along a great deal in the last 10 or 15 years regarding maturity and um, becoming more sophisticated. Uh, I think what has changed in very recent times, for whatever reason, is that there is not quite that feeling of uh, confidence and optimism and the feeling of all pulling together that I think was so prevalent for such a long period of time. So I think we're seeing uh, some uh, rather aggravating, uh, harsh kinds of uh, relationships, which uh, probably are not as smooth as they could be. And Dr. Kirk, I'd like you to respond to that question also, but before you do, let me remind the audience that our phone numbers are 774-3691 and 774-3698. You can feel free to call in tonight, and we will be able to put you through to answer your questions. Thank you for tuning in once again. And Dr. Kirk, go ahead and respond about the changes you've seen over the past 20 years. Well, I agree with Dean Plack to that, that we have progressed considerably over the two decades that I've been here and, and the changes in recent times that have been most disturbing to me are the increasing confrontational nature of the relationship between 
the administration and the collective bargaining agents, and we're part of the CMU family, and, and we want to participate in improving the working conditions and environment for learning at this campus. And, and we've, we seem to have moved backwards. Uh, the most recent e example of that, of course, is the strike, the first strike in the history of this institution. We want to get back to a collaborative, uh, mm. participatory form of governance that Dean Plachter referred to as, as one that had evolved here over the years. I think it's one that has worked well in the past at CMU, and we hope that we'll get back on that track again. Again. All right, now you made a reference, at, and uh, this has actually been sort of a, uh, if I might, I might call it a buzz phrase, um, uh, the CMU family. Mm -hmm. um, and this is something we've been hearing a lot about, uh, particularly in these bad times, to remind people. What does that mean, to be a part of the CMU fa uh, family? What does that mean now, and what, what do you think it's going to mean? Well, for us, it, it means that we all have a relationship with the overall mission of this institution. We have a role to play, and that role involves assisting each other in performing our job to the best of the ability for the students. Yes, I think there's a sense of pulling together and all being uh, cooperative and mm -hmm. working towards uh, a goal and a product. Uh, I think, in general, while this campus has been known to be, quote, a friendly campus, unquote, I think it's also been friendly, not so much uh, just for the students uh, who are here in great numbers, but also for the people who work here. I think there has been a, a general sense of uh, feeling good about one's work, mm -hmm. and one's role, and uh, perhaps that's not quite the case today. Do you feel that this promotion from within is going to be uh, a way to help perpetuate, uh, or I should maybe even har harbor uh, or, or form some sort of uh, feeling of uh, community on this campus? Well, I hope so. Uh, my crystal ball is rather hazy, of mm -hmm. course, to answer that kind of question. Uh, I think, uh, as I try to answer it, Jason, I, I'm impressed with the considerable optimism and confidence and enthusiasm that has been voiced to me both orally and in writing uh, since Friday morning. Mm -hmm. So I have a sense that people from all walks of life on this campus are rather optimistic and enthusiastic. Uh, I hope that uh, it works out uh, half as well as some of my well-wishers mm -hmm. uh, hope it will. Yes, it's, it's interesting because I'm not sure that there would have been, I mean, obviously people uh, with all the turmoil that has been on campus, there has been a sense that some change needed to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, but I'm not sure it would have, uh, the, the um, enthusiasm would have been as strong had they looked elsewhere for uh, someone to fill that role. And that's what is of considerable interest here. Um, having been a dean or being a dean, yeah. um, how is that going to affect your perspective in this position that you're going to take? Well, my intention is to assume a posture which is one that is built on confidence, both for myself as I relate to the position, as well as confidence for the university in the future. Uh, I would like to think that uh, I have a level of credibility and, uh, and respect has been mentioned a number of times and that I think are rather powerful tr uh, attributes that, uh, that could be useful in, in bringing back this campus to a, to a collegial family. You, you might ask my colleague that same question, perhaps you get a more objective answer from him. <laughs> Dean Plecht is widely respected across campus, and we see it as encouraging that the Board of Trustees offered the position to a person who is from the faculty and who understands the operation of the schools and colleges. Part of the recent difficulties, I think, were, the, were compounded by the deans being moved out of participation in that executive committee and the top decision making. Uh, the, the proposed FTE cuts, for example, the, the critical players in this are the deans to, to help identify uh, ways in which to soften the blow on the educational mission and, and perhaps even to modify the stance on, on those FTE cuts. And I, I think universally, well, I'm sure everyone isn't uh, as totally pleased, but the, what I hear across campus is just a, a very uh, positive view and expectation for and these, changes that are underway. And so these, these FT cuts are going to go through as planned, although, you know, is, that, is that the case? Well, we, 
It isn't over until it's over. Well, that's true. We uh, hope uh, the, the the movement is in that direction at this very moment. The movement is in the direction, and so are, would you say then it, it's a distinct possibility that there'll be other options looked at? Is that fair to say? We certainly were looking at another option yes. a few days ago. Yes, I mean, we were uh, given a little setback in we terms of a, a, the a, retirement a incentive retirement program. incentive program that did not uh, make great appeal with the board Friday. So, mm -hmm. uh, these are difficult moments, and I have to remind you, of course, that I'm not in the position yet either. Right. So, uh, <laughs> so it's awkward for me to answer that question. For Certainly. Um, okay, um, we're going to start moving into some some of some specific issues, and also um, the board of trustees. Uh, some discussion about them. But um, before we do that, why don't we talk a little bit about? Uh, and this is definitely a question for both of you. What are your goals in the short term? first and then the long term for uh, now that we're having this change and I I will I will go ahead and start with you Dr. Okay. well my the charge to me is I understand it from the Board of Trustees to act as an interim president in such a manner that the campus can recover some of the positive things that it had and to come back to a more quote normal unquote environment so that uh, there will be a, a, a greater opportunity to attract a more permanent uh, president who would then be coming to this campus later on. So I see myself, I, I hesitate to use perhaps the overused word healing, but to some extent I think it's a healing process. It's a process in which I, I hope that I, in my leadership role, can bring uh, a confidence and optimism and looking at the bright side of things on this campus and not the negative things that we seem to be zeroing in on in current times, and to, uh, to see uh, what changes we can make uh, to see what we can keep that will be improved and uh, come out with uh, uh, just a, a preparation to, uh, to be better in the very near future. So my, my attitude is both short run and long run. Long run, even though I will not be in a position long run, apparently, uh, but nevertheless I have to look to the future and the next person. And in terms of short run, uh, we want to be doing things almost immediately uh, because I sense that people have that feeling that we have to Get, get along and do things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Before you respond to that question, Dr. Kirk, um, and before we continue to talk a little about how you intend to do that, uh, we do have a caller, so go ahead and put on your headsets. Our caller tonight, or our first caller, is Donna from White Pigeon. Donna, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi. Are you guys there? Yes. Okay. Um, I live at Northwest Apartments, and the major gripe so far that I've heard is with the SAC. We don't get a choice in paying that $90 a year. And as non-traditionals, we all have children here, and we have to pay a $22 every semester fee for our children. On top of that, there are certain hours that they can be there. And I wanted to start working out again, and I did talk to a Dr. Tom Jones who's been very agreeable with helping. And they're going to try and get some seating in the workout center so that our children can sit in there while we work out. Right now it stands that they have to be out in the lobby where we cannot discipline them. I, along with many others, feel that this is a family-oriented society, and I feel we're being discriminated against because we don't have the option to, to pay this $90. It's something we have to do. And then on top of that, we are limited to, to the usage of the center. I, I have not been able to use the center because I cannot afford uh, to come at night when it is my only free time and have to pay a babysitter on top of that. And I was just wondering if whoever's in charge of, of making these rules was going to lighten up a little bit because they have the stands. You can only come from 3 to 7 with your child or 3 to 8. They've changed that. But there are a lot of limitations. And I was wondering what your views on that were, and uh, you know if there were going to be any changes. If if they're not going to change, then they should give us the option of whether we want to pay that forty-five dollars a semester. Okay, Donna, thank you for voicing your concern. We'll discuss that. You've articulated the problem very well, Donna. Uh, Obviously, it's a little premature for me to say what I might do about that. It's a complex problem. I've been reading the letters to the editor and understanding what students have been complaining about. 
uh, that plus the uh, issue of uh, parking, which you didn't bring up, but I understand that's an issue as well as parking at the student uh, uh, center. Uh, I have um, a strong feeling that th that entire issue of the fee and the parking and the babysitting services that you speak of, I think is very important and I should look at to it, um, look into it. Uh, I don't know where that looking into will take us though. All right, uh, we will go further into some of these issues after the break. In the meantime, our number again is 774-3691 or 774-3698. After the break, we'll continue talking about the future of Central Michigan University. Yo, what's up? From the McGruff Files, a story about some folks who got organized to take back their neighborhood. The place was getting run down, crime and drugs were out of hand, and honest folks felt like prisoners in their own homes. Neighbors decided to do something, so they worked together and with the police. Things happened pretty quick after that. Weekly meetings led to community action. Vacant lots were cleaned up and fenced. Neighbors even started planting gardens. Nice job, Sherry. Real nice. All the folks pitched in. Garbage was recycled. Street lamps were fixed. Before you knew it, they turned a bad situation around. The neighbors had their neighborhood back. How about that? Way yeah. to go, guys. Things are looking better for these folks nowadays. Yeah. yeah. Working together works, so don't get scared, get organized. Pick up a pencil and write this down and I'll send you my free booklet. Let's get the neighbors together and help me uh, take a bite out of crime. Some kids take to swimming like a fish to water, and some don't. In fact, any child can drown in just two inches of water. Make the water safe for your child with the Red Cross Water Safety Program. Under the sea, in an octopus's garden, in the shade. Welcome back to Crosstalk on 91 Rock FM and MHTV. The phone lines are open for your comment or question. Call 774-3691 or 774-3698. If the lines are busy, keep trying. Crosstalk on MHTV and 91 Rock FM. Thank you for joining us on Crosstalk tonight. Again, our guests tonight are Dr. Leonard Plakta, the Dean of the College of Business Administration and soon to be the Interim President of Central Michigan University, effective in January, and Dr. Rod Kirk of the Sociology, Anthropology, and Social Work Department, also the President of the Faculty Association. Once again, thank you, gentlemen, for joining us tonight on Crosstalk. And uh, before the break, we had a call from a, a woman by the name of Donna, um, a non-traditional student who voiced some concerns about the Student Activity Center. And um, as we were discussing before we went to break and during the break, um, some of these issues are, are obviously going to be looked into. Um, I know, Dr. Plachter, you're not really in a position right now to, um, to speculate on what's going to happen with that issue, and I certainly don't uh, expect you to come up with a, an answer off the cuff on that. Well, I should say, in general, it's my perspective right now that as the incoming president, I should be concerned about asking some uh, questions which will uh, look into practices, what we have been doing, and are those things relevant? Is there a time for change? Are some practices or policies perhaps no longer relevant? Are we moving with the times? So I do intend to ask uh, those kinds of critical um, questions, which I hope will maybe take us in some new directions mm -hmm. or modify what we are doing. Now, before the break also, you had described your 
short-term goal as a healing process. Mm -hmm. Now, could you reflect on how you, uh, some of those methods that you sure, might use? Sure, I'll be pleased to do that. I certainly hope to open communications. That seems to be a word that I've been hearing so much about at all levels that is inadequate for whatever reason. Uh, I do intend to receive more people, talk to more people, move about the campus more, attend various kinds of activities, as I've been prone to do anyway in previous capacities, and in general to uh, reach out to people and to try to solidify the uh, idea of a family on campus. Mm -hmm. So I think openness, uh, sincerity, I hope, uh, asking the right questions. Some approachability and accessibility. Approachability, accessibility. Okay. That's right. Now, Dr. Kirk, your short-term goals for our campus with, in light of this new change? Are also very similar to Dean Plactus, and that is to help bring the groups back together again, uh, mainly the various employee groups, ours included, and the administration, and get back into this collaborative mode rather than a confrontational mode. And none of us have been pleased with the direction that, that things have been going over the last couple of years, and we're looking forward to a, a period of much improved relations. And obviously working together, we can address and, and help solve uh, the problems that face this institution. And we felt recently that we were looked at as the problem. We're part of the solution. We're not part of the problem. And, and, and we, uh, in the long term run, we want to improve these kinds of relationships which will benefit the university in general. All right. Well, I say we're well on our way considering the fact that you are sharing goals. That's um, well. That, yes. That's something that we might not have had uh, in, uh, say, two months ago if we had the same people in the same positions. Um, now, Dr. Jakubowskis came into office in 1988 and uh, established his 12-point plan, so to speak. Um, what is going to come of this 12-point plan, this needs assessment that he came up with? I really don't know, Jason. Uh, I will have to take a closer look at that. A lot of effort went into that. It was a result of an extensive uh, strategic planning uh, program on campus. Uh, those were, I think, well-received statements mm -hmm. that he had developed. Uh, some of them have hefty price tags, which in light of uh, budgetary difficulties we'll have to take a look at. Uh, I don't know what we will do. I think it's just a little early for me to mm -hmm. say. Uh, obviously, it's a document which is out there. It's knowable. It's visible. It's discussable. Uh, we will see. Mm -hmm. Do you have any comments on that? Well, just that I, th I think the uh, strategic planning forums that were held a couple of years ago were very positive. Perhaps what we need to do is step back just one pace to those planning forums and reevaluate what came out of them. I believe that's the sentiment of the Academic Senate, that they, they want to revisit those, that that was the genesis for the 12 points of the President, and, and maybe that will allow us to identify those items which are most critical and maybe even low cost. Mm -hmm. I should point out that uh, the Board of Trustees, as uh, we discussed my appointment, is very much concerned about the university taking a closer look at who it is and where it's going and what counts and where we should be in the future. Uh, basically, those are the same questions that strategic planning works at. So I think the Board of Trustees, I know the Board of Trustees is very interested in having a strategic plan, and I think we will dust off what has been done and what seemed to have been kind of brought to a quick close at one time mm -hmm. and probably should be reopened. Mm, okay. Now, there are a lot of... Uh, with regard to this 12-point plan, among them, uh, perhaps one of the most, um, I should, I want to say the one that was uh, looked at the most in the last four years, in, in, and I think it's fair to say, is the issue of diversity on our campus. Um, and that not only cultural diversity, but uh, the, uh, as you gentlemen both know, you've both been here for 20 or more years, mm -hmm. um, the campus is changing. The type of students that are out there are changing. Um, and uh, something that people are concerned with, regardless of their background, is this issue of diversity on our campus. Maybe you can, uh, considering our centennial is coming up rather quickly, um, this is an, uh, not only a chance for a new administration, but also a chance for us to look at the next 100 years. Um, what's happening? What's going, what's going to happen with the, the issue of diversity um, 
particularly I'm particularly concerned with since you're coming into office. What are some of the uh, your thoughts on that issue? Well, I have to admit that in spite of many, many efforts through the years, diversity has not uh, materialized to any great degree. The university has tried. I'm convinced of that. Uh, given uh, who we are and our location and our traditions and our background and the kinds of programs we have, I suppose we have been kind of minimal in terms of making uh, uh, this an attractive place to come and study uh, for a diverse audience. Uh, I have hope that that will continue. Certainly the concept of diversity, I think, is getting more and more accepted on this campus, even though it doesn't seem to necessarily be capturing a diverse audience. Uh, so I am positive about that. I think it will take time. Uh, we are uh, a campus that is uh, not only uh, uh, mostly a majority, but it's also mostly Michigan. And so it's not even diverse in terms of representation from other states beyond the state borders. So uh, I, I think we can do a lot more to bring people. We have not tried to recruit uh, students from uh, foreign countries. We really have never, to the best of my knowledge, done anything very active. And uh, there is growing talk that we ought to do that as an example. We do have some foreign-born students, but not very many. And uh, I think we can make that go if we just try and market ourselves. Okay. And uh, Dr. Kirk, what about the uh, diversity of the faculty? Well, the Faculty Association has been approaching this issue on a number of different grounds. Uh, a few years ago, we added a new position to our board of directors that is uh, affirmative action concerns. Uh, and we have an individual in that position now who has spearheaded the establishment of a faculty association task force. Uh, this task force has tried to address some of the unfortunate incidents that have occurred on this campus and, and to increase sensitivity of faculty to some of the issues uh, that are problematic for ourselves and for minority students, for example, and majority students as well. I can even put on my other hat. I've been serving on the General Education Council since it started uh, last year. And we think that the institution of the new Group 4 requirement uh, focusing on diversity in the United States is an important addition to the university program and is one that will ensure that our students each have a chance to wrestle with some of these key questions in the classroom as well as out. How do you feel the students are going to react when uh, our incoming freshmen next year, or first year students rather, are, are, uh, are shown the new university program which will include uh, more studies in diverse cultures? Um, considering the bulk of our, our uh, population is majority, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, what type of attitude do you think they'll have toward that? Are our students, our first-year students, and I realize there's non-traditionals and others coming in, but on the whole, as far as first-year students are concerned coming out of high school, are they ready for uh, a more diverse experience? Well, if they are not ready when they come into some of these classes, we hope that the, mm -hmm. the courses themselves will interest them in learning something that is uh, going to increase their appreciation of the diversity in the United States. Uh, this is certainly one of the one of the main hopes that we have. I, obviously, I would hope they are uh, are ready to assimilate some information as well. But uh, I think it was important to discuss that mm -hmm. anyway. Um, now, to sort of change uh, the wavelength that we're on a little bit, um, I'm going to say that Trustee Mitch Kahitian was quoted by Sunday's Morning Sun as saying that the brunt of the attacks against Dr. Jack Kowalskis was because he was carrying out the instructions of the Board of Trustees during negotiations. Um, what does this say about the role of the Board of Trustees? And I'll let uh, Dr. Kirk answer this first. Well, I, if the Board has, has been so insistent on themselves managing the university, I hope that under the new administration they will indicate their confidence in the new administration by allowing them to move with their own program and, and plan. If, if, if they don't give management flexibility, it's going to be very difficult to solve problems that face us. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think their selection of Dean Plakta is an indication that they have trust and confidence in him, and that is the key. All right. And we'll be watching closely to the, and hopefully. 
I'm sure certain the students will be as well. Yes. Now, Dr. Plack, I know that that's a heavy question. Before you <laughs> before you answer that, uh, fortunately, we do have a break to go to, so that'll right. give you some more thought on that. Um, after the break, we will continue discussing the issue of Central's future and with regard to the trustee issue, number 774-3691 or 774-3698. Stay with us. Major League Baseball manager, if you own a pet, you strike a bargain. You get loyalty and trust, a clown when you're sad, and someone to laugh at all your jokes. In return, he needs the basics. Food, shelter, love. Love means getting your pet spayed or neutered. Even if we love cats and dogs, there just aren't enough homes for them all. Have your pet spayed or neutered now, because they're counting on us to keep our part of the deal. For more information, contact the Humane Society of the United States, Washington, D.C. Thousands of forest fires are started by people who never realize what they've done. Some never even set foot in the forest. Playing basketball is a lot like driving a car. To stay ahead, you have to play it smart on the road. And if there's one thing I've learned from Traverse City to Central Michigan University to the NBA playoffs is you need a strong defense to stay in the game. Here's one defensive move that can make a big difference next time you hit the road. Use your best defense, safety belts. Tonight, Dolores had a few drinks, did some crack, and ended up another tragic story. Only she doesn't know it yet. Drugs make you forget. And if you forget how risky sex can be, you could catch the AIDS virus and not know it for months, even years. AIDS, another way drugs can kill. Six. Help yourself. Welcome back to Crosstalk on 91 Rock FM and MHTV. The phone lines are open for your comment or question. Call 774-3691 or 774-3698. If the lines are busy, keep trying. Crosstalk on MHTV and 91 Rock FM. Welcome back to Crosstalk. Our number is 774-3691, and we are talking about the future of Central Michigan University. If you did just join us, our guests tonight are Dr. Leonard Plakta, the Dean of the College of Business Administration and soon to be the Interim President of Central, and also Dr. Rod Kirk, a faculty member in the Department of Sociology, Anthropology, and Social Work, and also the President of the Faculty Association. Again, uh, thank you for joining us. Um, before the break, we I, well, let me start by reading the question again because it involved a quote by Mitch Kahishian, who was one of the trustees. He said that the brunt of the attacks against Dr. Jakubowskis was because he was carrying out the instructions of the Board of Trustees during negotiations. And the question was, what does this say about the role of the trustees and their power on our campus? Trustees are appointed to represent the public, and they do come from different walks of life. And I think trustees of CMU or any other public organization have a very difficult uh, road to walk in which on one hand they are really expected to define policy, the, the, the big things, the, 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 the directions of the purposes of an organization. At the same time, it's very hard to draw that line between policy and the next step, which is the day-to-day -day operations. And uh, it's so easy for an individual board member to get excited or concerned or enthusiastic about uh, his or her relationship to that university and then proceed to what I might think of as meddling, mm -hmm. uh, where in practice they may think they're just doing their job and just getting a little more involved and showing interest. 
And so it's a very fine line between policy and operations, daily operations. In general, I think the textbooks would say that the president and the vice presidents and the other officers of the university should take care of the day-to-day -day operations. The board says policy. And the board is the boss for the president, and the president is supposed to carry out policy. Uh, obviously, there is a difficulty there. I do not know exactly what policies or rules the board laid out for uh, President Jakubowski, so I was not privy to that. Uh, all I can say as president, I do want to uh, comply with the board's policy. After all, they're the boss. But at the same time, it's a two-way street in my mind. It's, it's a street in which uh, my suggestions and interpretations and my knowledge go forward to them. And so I think my job, I certainly see my job as one of not just listening and carrying out, but actually helping to convert and to sway and to influence the board so that we do have a, a kind of a common meeting ground. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'll be working on. All right. Now, a couple of presidents back, um, I, they were referring to uh, Harold Abel uh, had left. And of course, I don't, I don't even have the, the, all the circumstances, nor do I wish to, to delve into that. But um, my understanding on that issue is that there was his resignation or his, his departure came in the wake of some uh, disagreements with the trustees. And would that, would that be fair to say? That's what I understand. I okay. was not close to the scene. All right. Yes. Now, um, in this case, uh, we're not sure if there's been disagreement with trustees. That's not been the, what has been publicized. Do you think that by appointing uh, a, a dean, one who has been maybe considered to be disenfranchised, one of those on our campus who had, con had been considered to be disenfranchised, do you think by appointing these deans this shows that the trustees are in a posture that uh, is going to be conducive to change on their part as a board or, as a, or perhaps their roles? It's hard for me to say, since I don't know all of them, I know some better than others, and a few are very new. And of course, in the brief moments I've had with them in recent times, we haven't explored in any great detail their concerns or their strategies or policies. I would hope, though, that they would recognize that uh, it is a two-way street that I spoke of earlier, and that they will show enough respect for my experience and my attitudes and my impressions and my directions that will, they will do more than just lay down the law to me and mm -hmm. make it a one-way street. So I'm optimistic about that, okay. but I think that is a task for me. Dr. Kirk? And I think part of the difficulty, maybe especially for the new members of the board, is, is still a lack of total understanding of what the university is about and the university culture. And I was heartened, in fact, at the prior board meeting when when board members were so receptive to the reaching out of, of John Robertson of the Academic Senate, saying we would like to schedule meetings with board members so we could discuss uh, elements of, of common interest regarding the university and concerns. And the Faculty Association has done the same. We have had uh, meetings with some board of trustees outside of that formal atmosphere, uh, uh, especially in, in uh, late last spring when the new members came on board and there was a uh, reception that we took part in and, and so we want to also help broaden their understanding of the university. I think they'll be able to function better with with more knowledge and, and understanding of what this place is all about. How do you feel that uh, obviously the, the issue of whether deans or, or faculty members um, having having around this campus at the same time there has been a lot of indications that the student well I should say more than that it's been uh, it's been blatantly stated that the students have been disenfranchised as well and I myself have attended trustees meetings and observed uh, students um, making statements and voicing concerns to the boards uh, to the board and in some cases. Um, it has been alleged that they that some have walked out, uh, some trustee members have walked out, um, not necessarily despite the individual speaking, but um, perhaps the, uh, I heard also comments that they were joking with each other and not paying attention. Not all of them, obviously, but certain certain ones. Um, and we've seen in, uh, some some serious uh, tumult on this campus in in the past uh, several months, especially uh, with votes of no comments and all that. Maybe then, as a as a I guess a piggyback to that last question, um, 
the trustees maybe have seen that approach the approach that they've tried in the past uh, may not have been working do you think that that might be the case uh, I I'm not sure that's a fair question to ask uh, Dr. Plakta right now or I don't know because I really have not been very closely involved with the board other than when there was a very specific item in the last several years that may have involved my college uh, so uh, while I've known a few of them for a number of years I really don't know how to answer that question okay and I guess I'm I'm not sure either. I, right. Clearly, they were ready to participate in a change, and and I take that as a we take anything as a positive sign well, at this moment sure. in time. But I do have assurances from the board but, that uh, the choice uh, of me as the next president was unanimous, a real unanimous kind of decision, and I have assurances from I think virtually every one of them personally that. Uh, they are supportive and pleased, and so I see this as a kind of a vote of confidence and a, and a bit of trust and anticipation that things will work well. I'm sure we'll have our difficulties. I think all boards have difficulties with uh, CEOs. Is it, per, is it premature to ask if you have uh, uh, the idea of staying longer than two years in that position? I have no intention in our plan. I think we have a mutual agreement with the board that uh, I would say approximately two years, give or take a little bit, depending on what it takes to uh, get the place back on track and prepared for an outside search. All right. And on that note, um, describe for us uh, your management style, and, and particularly maybe in comparison to the management style of the individual that is your predecessor. I hesitate to make the comparisons. Mm -hmm. uh, but let, let me say, though, that uh, I bring to the job, every job I do, a great deal of uh, conviction, uh, of confidence, and interest in the work. And uh, I like to do my homework. I'm a fairly thorough employee in that sense. I'd like to think that uh, I have uh, human beings at heart, and uh, therefore it is more than just a job or a way to make a dollar. Uh, and I think that when all is said and done, it's humans who count rather than things. Uh, so that's the kind of attitude that I will very openly bring to the task. So I think it's one of uh, compassion and understanding. But at the same time, I have to remind uh, your listeners and you that uh, I come from a business-type background. Uh, I am very much interested in uh, efficiency and uh, system and uh, appropriate uses of resources. Uh, those kinds of things, and so I will try to bring those attitudes as well. Will you be having an executive council? I probably will. I just, it's a little early for me to, to say exactly what structures and how we will formulate our own policies and procedures. I, at this moment, I, my intention is really to uh, begin with what is there and then after a short look begin to modify and make changes because I have not really been participating in the inner circle. I've been close to the inner circle once in a great while inside, but not regularly inside. Okay, I, I will go further into that. Could I add one Certainly. thing, Jason, that I think is very important, and that is that Dean Plakta has an intimate understanding of the bargaining process, which is very important. We still have uh, three units that have not settled on contract yet, and that's an important step forward uh, in order to move to the through into the healing process, and and you know we hope that the administration will be able to find a way to conclude bargaining with these groups so that we can all get back together and and focus our attention on the on the serious problems that do face the institution. All right, we'll, we'll, we will delve into the issue of collective bargaining after the break, and we also have a caller who I hope will stay on the line. Uh, the number 774-3691 or 774-3698. Tonight on Crosstalk, the future of Central Michigan University. about raising children. Run, jump, climb, walk, laugh and cry. Throw, fish, play, catch, sleep and slide. Listen, swim, eat, grin, cook and cheer. Giggle, wait, talk straight, woo, be there. Love isn't just something you say, it's something you do. 
from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. <laughs> from Bella Wood to Verdun, Okinawa to Iwo Jima, Inchon to Chosen, Kantian to Kaysan, Basra to Kuwait. They've been on the job for 75 years for their country and their corps. Happy 75th birthday to the United States Marine Corps Reserve. Semper Fidelis. Fetch your drinking water. Take one. Is your water safe to drink from the faucet to the sink? Is it good for moms and babies? We want to know and don't mean me. Gem. G-E-M. Gem. G-E-M. If your water comes from the top, can you protect what's going down? Keep that water clean and pure. Get some M so you can be sure. Gem can help you understand. Gem can help you make a plan. Gem can help you share the facts. Gem can get you in the air. What's gem? G stands for groundwater. E stands for education. M, well, that's Michigan. Groundwater education in Michigan. Gem has something for everyone. Call 517-353-3742 and get involved. That's a wrap. This is Eli Wallach for the American Red Cross. Please give service message from the ID. Welcome back to Crosstalk on 91 Rock FM and MHTV. The phone lines are open for your comment or question. Call 774-3691 or 774-3698. If the lines are busy, keep trying. Crosstalk on MHTV and 91 Rock FM. Welcome back to Crosstalk. We're talking about the future of Central Michigan University, and if you just walked in, and joined us, Dr. Leonard Plakta, the soon-to-be interim president of the university, also the dean of the College of Business Administration. And also we have Dr. Rod Kirk, a faculty member in the Sociology, Anthropology, and Social Work Department, also the president of the Faculty Association. Before we continue on uh, what we were discussing before the break, we have a caller, and that caller is Sue from Waterford. She is a senior. Go ahead, Sue. Um, yes, my question is for Dean Plakta. Um, Dean, how do you feel about um, shared governance at the university, and in what direction, if any, would you like to take it? Sue, I, I fully recognize that uh, shared governance is an important component of uh, American higher education, and it's well established here at CMU. Uh, at times, it falters, and it, uh, it uh, goes back and forth uh, in degree. Uh, my intention is to make shared governance work as best as possible. Uh, how to do it? Well, in part, I think, to recognize it as a goal, uh, as I'm doing here, uh, based upon your question. And secondly, to, uh, to just behave in a manner that uh, exhibits that and demonstrates it, and that is by uh, uh, receiving opinions, by considering <laughs> attitudes, by participation, uh, there, is, uh, there are many opportunities for shared governance on campus because of the various committee structure, uh, the various task forces, uh, the academic senate, uh, including the bargaining units on campus. In general, uh, I have to point out, though, that uh, uh, governance and sharing is one thing, getting opinions and input and ideas is another thing, and then finally making decisions is something else. And uh, I think... Uh, uh, it's appropriate to say that, in general, when the decision has to be made, it's, uh, it's largely a top administrative position decision uh, based upon uh, getting the ideas, getting the information, getting the opinion, uh, and sharing all of that. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, I guess management must manage. Okay. Thank you, Sue, for calling in. And on that note, um, we were discussing the collective bargaining process before the break. How is this change going to affect that process? Obviously, the FA um, is not... Uh, working on that right, or I should say they're not in bargaining right That's now. Right. Clerical union is up in the air a little bit, um, and uh, as we were discussing, there's other unions to consider. What's going to happen? I don't know what will happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
again, I have not, in my position as dean, I have not been close to those scenes. Mm -hmm. I have been a member of the university's bargaining team uh, uh, when we bargained with the FA during the last two contracts, three years apart each. So I have a great awareness about that. Uh, on the other hand, I'm just not close enough to the mm -hmm. administrative scene regarding uh, these other contracts which are in abeyance right now. Uh, so I really don't know exactly uh, even what the next steps are for some of them. I know we are waiting for a fact finder's report regarding the clerical association, and I think that will be forthcoming sometime in January, I believe. Mm -hmm. We had mentioned earlier, too, that uh, although doc while Dr. Jakubowskis came from an institution that, to my knowledge, did not have collective bargaining, uh, SUNY at Genesee, is that where he's yes. from? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, you have been obviously here for 20, 20 plus years and also as a business uh, a person, obviously in the business department, have more uh, involvement with these types of issues. So perhaps there will be uh, a little bit more shared understanding of the process on both parts and maybe, again, again to go back to what uh, Dr. Kirk said, maybe more chance of a collaborative approach to solving these issues. We certainly hope so. And... Uh the faculty association is in the second year of its three-year contract, uh, and so we will be looking towards the next bargaining period as well. And we and we want to build uh, a collaborative relationship so we can move forward mm -hmm. smoothly with bargaining. Uh, it it is terribly divisive on a campus such as this to to only look at bargaining as a confrontational. Uh, kind of activity and I know there there are a number of institutions around the country that have experimented very successfully with with a collaborative win-win approach <coughs> of bargaining and I'd, sure. I'd like to move towards that. That, that should be our goal and I would like to move mm -hmm. towards that too. Ron. Okay and I'm sure the IPC department who has the conflict class um, <laughs> is, is if they're for those professors watching I have the class so uh, I know they're going to have uh, two cents for that. Um, now, to delve into specific issues now, the Chippewa nickname, um, and uh, there's, there's a, uh, a very controversial issue, particularly um, this year, has been, there's been a lot of, of uh, um, concern about this issue. Ironically, too, though, that um, this was given a three-year trial period at our school uh, by Dr. Jakubowskis. Um, according to the timeline, the, from the date he announced this, this is to end March 16th, 1992. Um, and I know that there's different councils on campus looking into this issue, and they're going to want some decision made because it was up for review. Um, and March 16th isn't too far away. Uh, do you have any thoughts about this issue? Nothing that I think I can really express with any great confidence right now. I have followed the controversy. I read the report that was issued a few years ago. I'm aware that uh, we're at the next milestone very shortly, namely March or whenever you say it will be. Uh, I read the criticisms. I read the pros and cons. I don't know. And I, I, I guess uh, it will probably fall in my lap, and, and I'll have to get a little closer to the scene. It's complex. Uh, we're talking about uh, uh, sensitivity by individuals. Uh, we're also talking about great traditions and uh, the long-term use of a name. And, I don't know, Jason. Mm -hmm. Dr. Kirk? I, I can express a, a personal viewpoint. It's not the official uh, position of the faculty association, but personally it seems to me that, that we can retain something of the acknowledgement of our setting here, home of the Chippewa perhaps, without demeaning the relationship by, by identifying a, a population as a mascot and somehow attaching it to a, a football team or any other sports team. We could in, invite relevant people from the reservation in to negotiate or talk with them about what way would they like their association represented. Uh, I mean, this, this is the territory, and if I'm not mistaken, part of the university came out of reservation land or land that had uh, pertained to the uh, Chippewa, Saginaw Chippewa tribe. So I, there's clearly a relationship here, but uh, whether it needs to, uh, I don't think it needs to be expressed in the form of a mascot, that is. Okay. Um, now, Dr. Plakta, um, you were head of a committee by the, or using, which use your name, uh, uh, yeah. I'm not sure I meant that question to come right after that other question, That's but uh, <laughs> um, 
you issued the or the committee issued the Plakta report. Um, there's uh, you know, a silence comes over the room when it's mentioned. What were the key findings of your committee? Well, the report contained many, many recommendations. Mm -hmm. I forget how many, but great numbers. It also contained responses that we received from the community, from all members of the community who chose to respond. So there was a, literally a listing of, of suggestions, some of them duplicating. In general, I think our committee did strive to look at the entire campus as best we could in the rather short time that we had. I thought we did a remarkably quick job and rather thorough given we had just a few months to do it. Uh, we looked at virtually everything. Bear in mind that our charge to us by the president was to look at ways to increase revenue or reduce expenditures. So that was the charge. It wasn't uh, strategic planning or any other kind of charge. And so literally we looked at that. Where do the dollars come from? Where could they come from differently? And where do the dollars go? And need they go that way, or is there a better alternative? Uh, we came up with, uh, obviously, more comments about the expenditure side than the revenue side, because certainly there are more ways to spend money than there is to get it. And so when you're talking about getting it, uh, you either get it from contributions from the students through tuition or fees, or you get it from the legislature. And uh, so we talked about those, and, and I have to admit that we paid a little more attention to the fees and the tuition, both in terms of trying to raise more dollars as well as trying to be fairer and in total just uh, pricing the product properly. Uh, I think the greatest hope is in the expenditure side. Uh, as an accountant, uh, I'm very familiar with uh, financial terms and numbers and analyses and that kind of thing. I think there are great potentials here for us to pick up on the Plakta report and to follow through with some of those things that look at the way we're organized to do business, how we spend our money, uh, are there more efficient ways of doing things, are we efficient, are we effective, are we doing what we should be doing, do we need to do those things, uh, what alternatives are there to get the job done, and I think we have a long way to go in looking at those, and I intend to pursue them. All right, Dr. Do you have any? I, I have to admit that I dusted off my copy of the Plakta report and and uh, reviewed it again today, and and it is a very positive, productive document. It doesn't just identify areas to trim, but it it puts it in the context of programmatic needs of future goals and directions of the university and and uh, speaks to an open uh, forum for determining where these cuts should be and, and can be made. And, and I would like to suggest, if, if I could take this opportunity, to suggest that maybe early on in this new presidency you reinstitute something like the Plakta Committee and expand its membership to include the other constituent groups uh, at the last or previous board meeting, uh, Sherry Gon of the Clerical Association suggested participation by the various union groups. I, I think that would uh, be of benefit to something, uh, a committee of this sort, that would help to define and identify areas where cuts uh, could be made without seriously damaging uh, That's a good program. I think the students will probably want to have some voice on that. Mm -hmm. And student, I said all important right. constituent oh, groups and, yes, and certainly it. student uh, input mm -hmm. uh, representative of SG, SGA or, or uh, Okay. Now as we draw our show to a close, um, I guess I have another question for you and that is are there any issues that were previously thought to be closed um, by the, the current president that you might consider reopening, such as, say, the, the CMU chapel issue, the SAC fee, graduation fees, these type of things? Are you interested in looking into these issues? I'm interested in looking at virtually everything. Mm -hmm. I, it may be perhaps too ambitious on my part, but uh, I think almost anything is fair game for my analysis and my uh, uh, zeroing in on. Uh, I can't say they'll be productive, but I think it's worth the other look. So those things and many others that you mentioned, uh, I'm all for taking a closer look at. I, I don't think anything is sacred in that sense. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us, gentlemen. Uh, tonight we've been discussing the issue of Central's future. We had Leonard Plakta, soon to be interim president of the university, and Dr. Rod Kirk, also the, pre the president of the Faculty Association. Thank you for joining us tonight. And we'll see you next week on Crosstalk on 91 Rock FM and Morel Television. Stay tuned to 91 Rock FM for Contraband.
This has been Crosstalk on MHTV and 91 Rock FM. Tune in again next Tuesday night at 10 o'clock for Mount Pleasant's only locally produced current issues program, Crosstalk.